Welcome to SGT 312, Surgical Nursing. This is Module 2, Surgical Instrumentation. It's recommended that you review the instrument anatomy materials before you watch this video. Terminology from those materials feature heavily in this video. This module supports two learning outcomes. One, to prepare surgical packs based on procedure and patient needs. Two, identify and manipulate surgical instruments. To achieve these outcomes, we will use a combination of online and in-class activities. Online activities include an instrument anatomy PowerPoint for self-study and this surgical instrumentation video. During our face-to-face -face class, we'll handle and manipulate the very same instruments we're going to talk about here. The class will also demonstrate instrument use. There are two formative assessments during Module 2. Throughout this video, there will be questions asked of you to self-test. In class, you will have an instrument scavenger hunt. There are many different tasks that surgical instruments can perform, but many instruments are typically categorized by their general purpose, grasping or holding, clamping or occluding, cutting or dissecting, retracting or spreading. Grasping instruments allow the surgical team to control the surgical field. These grasping tools are called forceps. There are two main forms of forceps. The first has a locking capacity. That enables the user to grasp and hold without actually handling the instrument. Even if they were to place the instrument down, it can still be grasped in the locked position. The second is a thumb forcep. And as the name implies, the user's thumb is required to squeeze the instrument, pincer-like, for it to be used. As soon as the thumb forceps is placed down, it springs open. Rochester Carmelt forceps have two different patterns of striations to accomplish their task. The jaws have longitudinal striations, while the tips have cross-hatching. With all that detail, these are powerful instruments. They are used to occlude thick or dense tissues. Surgeon preference would determine if they are curved or straight. Alice tissue forceps are also powerful instruments, except all of their strength is in their tips. They have multiple teeth that meet at the tip to grasp tightly without slipping. Once they grab hold, even tissues with elastic resistance don't stand a chance but that firm grip is damaging to the tissues between the tips, and tissues that need to be reattached should be dissected to reveal a fresh edge. Dressing forceps are thumb forceps. They are only effective if being manipulated and will not work when placed down. Easily recognizable by the transverse striations, these are only used for material, never tissues. Hudson Hudson tissue forceps are a second thumb forceps used in surgery. These are indeed for tissues. In fact, they are specific to fine or delicate tissues. They have narrow pointed tips with fine rat teeth for grasping. Tissues that are friable or fragile are more easily manipulated without damage using Hudson Hudson forceps. For dense, thick tissues, we use rat tooth thumb forceps. Unlike the Adsons, these are thicker at the tips and they have a deeper bite between their teeth. They are ideal for skin, and these forceps can be purchased with a different number set of teeth at their tips. Needle drivers are a gripping instrument, but they can also be a cutting instrument. Sometimes called needle holders, these instruments are designed to grip steel needles firmly so that the sutures can be placed during surgery. The Mayo Hagar needle driver has crushed cross-hatched jaws and round tips. It can only be used to hold needles. The Olsen Hagar needle driver also has cross-hatched jaws and round tips, but the key difference is the set of cutting blades on the Olsen Hagars. They can be used to cut suture materials without requiring a separate instrument. The decision to use Mayo's or Olsen's is surgeon preference. Sponge forceps are very specific. They're not designed to grasp or hold tissues. Instead, they are used exclusively on materials. Aptly named, absorbent sponges are one example of material they can hold. Gauss squares are another example. 
Clamping or occluding was the second category of instruments mentioned. Most typically seen used to stop flow of vessels or pouches, they can also be seen to provide a strong grip on strong tissues that want to retract away. One particular subgroup are hemostatic forceps. These are specifically intended to stop the flow of blood. Kelly hemostats are an example of instruments to stop the flow of blood. These have medium-sized tips and transverse striations that run half the length of the jaw. Used to occlude cut vessels, these are integral to any surgical pack. Mosquito hemostats are a second integral instrument to any surgical pack. They belong to the cryal hemostats, and cryal hemostats are a further subgrouping of instruments. The cryals are all identified by the transverse striations running the full length of the jaw and the plain tips. Mosquitoes specifically are small and designed to occlude smaller vessels like capillaries. Think a small instrument, small vessels. The backhouse towel clamp is task specific and it's used to secure draping materials to the patient. To isolate the surgical field and support asepsis, all areas of the animal that are not surgically prepped need to be covered by sterile drapes. The trouble is that the drapes are made from material and they can slip or fall away. These clamps pierce the drapes and the patient's skin to hold fabric securely in place. Using backhouse towel clamps to drape your patient has a second benefit. Draping happens shortly after the patient is transferred into the surgical field and shortly before the surgeon starts the procedure. When these clamps are placed, patient reaction can be a good indicator of anesthetic depth. If the patient's vital signs indicate that they can feel the clamp being attached, you still have time to deepen the anesthetic prior to the surgeon's approach with a scalpel blade. Which brings us to cutting and excising. The third category of instruments. Incisions are just one example, but there is also a need to either remove tissues or even cut surgical materials while in the operating theater. Instruments used to cut can be subdivided into two groups, scissors and scalpels. Scissors can be designated as either tissue or non-tissue use, while scalpels are only used on tissues. There are more than a few scissors intended for use on tissues. The Mayo scissors are an example of scissors meant for thick or dense tissues. These are heavy scissors and they have thick blades. They also have round blunt tips so that if the blade is obscured by skin during cutting, the surgeon can be confident that the scissor tip isn't going to impale or cause trauma. One example of thick tissue that could be cut with Mayo scissors is the tissue found along the linea alba. Metzenbaum scissors are almost comically long. The scissors themselves isn't the comical part. It's the length of the shank between the ring handles and the screw hinge. That very specific feature is one of the identifiers for most Metzenbaum scissors. The second identifier is the delicate thin blades. They're still round blunt tips like the Mayo's, but these scissors are almost dainty. It's no coincidence that they are designed for thin and dainty tissues. The length is an added benefit to reaching deep into cavities without losing precision. Operating scissors are an example of material-only scissors. They can be purchased with sharp sharp or blunt sharp tips. Either way, they're meant for suture materials, bandages, sponges, or tubing, an all-purpose scissor to have in the operating theater. Some scalpels are purchased as single use. They will come with a plastic handle and the blade will be firmly and permanently attached to the tip. A second version is to have a surgical steel handle and single-use blades that are attached and removed in surgery. Surgical blades come in different sizes for different uses, and each shape is identified by a number. There are 10 series blades, like 10, 11, 15, etc., and then there are 20 series blades, like 20, 25. There are corresponding handles for each set. The 10 series blades will only fit on a number 3 handle, and the 20 series blades will only fit on a number 4 handle. You can see that the head of the blades right here would be specific to the head of the handles. 
The final category to discuss is those instruments that retract or expose tissues. Some surgeries require the area of interest to be exposed for a longer period of time, so the surgeon may prefer a self-retaining instrument. That would mean that the retractor would lock into an open position, leaving all hands free to work in the surgical field. There is also a second variety of retractor that's handheld and easily moved or removed. Balfour retractors are an example of self-retaining retractors. They can be open to fit the patient and the area of interest. Once the area is adequately exposed, they are locked into place and will hold firmly until the surgeon removes them. The shape of the rounded soft tips are ideal for skin and muscle layers, and these are primarily used in abdominal surgeries. They can also be bought in two sizes. The smaller version are called baby Balfours. A Fraser rib spreader is designed to improve visibility and access in thoracic surgeries. As the name suggests, the rounded tips will hook onto patient ribs and separate them apart. They are also self-retaining so that the surgeon can lock them into place without concern that they will slip or shift during the procedure. The Snook Spay Hook is almost a crossover between a grasping tool and a retractor. It was specifically invented for an ovariohysterectomy procedure. Standard practice is to make an abdominal incision on the patient, but the uterine horns and the ovarian pedicles are all in the dorsal aspect. So for better reach in a deep cavity, this soft rounded tool was created to act as an extension of the surgeon's fingers. It can reach into the cavity and hook the uterine horns and expose each for excision. Some tasks that need to be performed in surgery fall outside grasping, clamping, cutting, and retracting. There are a couple instruments that are typical to many surgeries that were custom designed for a single specific purpose. The bunt instrument clip is one. While all other instruments being grouped together in great numbers, it was only a matter of time before someone invented something to keep it all organized. This clip is meant for the sole purpose of keeping instruments orderly during sterilization. The kidney bowl is another example of a standalone piece of equipment. Some clinics will use the bowl to hold all the instruments inside a surgical pack, and others will sterilize kidney bowls individually. During surgery, they can be considered a hold-all. They can be used to hold liquids, solutions, or discarded materials. They can also be used to separate dirty or contaminated instruments from the remaining sterile instruments still left on an instrument table. If you would like to see more color images or to review the materials further, I strongly encourage you to refer to your course texts.